Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a full face testing new at Sephora makeup get ready with me creating the look that you see here. I played with so many new makeup launches today and gave my first or second third impressions on things. I tried out stuff from Makeup by Mario, Anastasia, One Size, Dior, Too Faced, Sephora collection. So, so many new products. So if you're interested in seeing my thoughts on new at Sephora makeup or just seeing me create this look, then just keep on watching. Starting off with primer, you guys know me, I absolutely love trying new primers. It's one of my favorite products to try, play around with. So we're definitely gonna include it in today's video, even though this product is the only product that technically isn't brand new to the market, but it is brand new to me. I have never tried the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I've now tried it a few times prior to filming this, but beforehand, I never tried the infamous or famous Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This is Milk's best-selling primer, one of Sephora's best-selling primers, and I received this in a big PR package from Milk. I will annotate in the description box down below what is from PR and what is purchased myself. I'm sure most of you are very familiar with this product as it isn't new and it's very popular, but it is going to be very, very hydrating to the skin and it's also going to have a grip or tackiness to it, which is going to help any makeup complexion product on top last longer throughout the day and stick to the skin better, essentially. So I've been liking it so far. I have to say I don't love the sensation of the tackiness itself. I have such acne prone skin and I have such sensitive skin so just that kind of sticky tacky feeling isn't something that I love I know that's what the product does and it is still super hydrating the ingredients don't seem to bother me but it's just not a texture that I love the feeling of but I do notice that my makeup wears really well when I use this as a base moving on to the actual base makeup I have two new foundation complexion products one of which I've used a lot and one I've only used once or twice so the main one that we're going to be going in with today is the NARS pure radiant tinted moisturizer I have mine in Finland light one and then the other complexion product that I have that's still relatively new to the market is the KVD Good Apple Foundation. I have mine in length 004. Pretty good shade match for me. It definitely matches my real complexion better than my tan, so that's why we're gonna mix the two a bit today. I'm gonna start off with the NARS Pure Tinted Radiant and then Pure Tinted, Pure Radiant Tinted same thing. And then I'm going to add in a touch of the KVD to just add coverage before we go in with concealer. Um, I've been reaching for the KVD a lot. I think it wears really well on dry skin, which is kind of what it's designed for. But I wanted to play around more so with the NARS one today because I haven't used it as much. It is slightly newer to the market than the KVD. And I just applied the product directly onto my beauty sponge. Yeah, I actually do really like the coverage on this and I like the finish. I've this will probably be my third time using it. This tinted moisturizer just seems to blend in so seamlessly. It gives the skin like a really soft, healthy look. And I don't think it's too radiant. I think that people with more like oily skin or more normal skin could definitely use this and it wouldn't be too like healthy, dewy, glowy. It's not too much of that. It's just like a healthy amount, which I really enjoy. Here's how the skin is looking with just the NARS Tinted Moisturizer. I actually really, really like how that looks. So I am going to skip out on the KVD for today. If you are wondering my thoughts, I really, really do like this. I think it's a gorgeous formulation. Only if you have more dry skin though. I think it'll be too slippy and oily in a sense for those of you with more normal oily skin. So if you have more dry skin and you like a full, full coverage, I mean, you can always customize it a bit, but if you have dry skin and you like full coverage, I think you'll like this. It also sits really nicely over acne and texture. So this is a good one. Um, and then I also really like this. I think it sits so beautifully on the skin. So, so far so good. For concealer, I have two other new products, one of which I have tried once and then one of which is brand, brand new I just purchased yesterday. So for the under eye, I'm going to be using the Fenty Bright Fit eye brightener illuminator in rose quartz 01 this is very very pink undertoned which I don't love I kind of knew it was going to be that because it's made to be an eye brightener it's made to have
have that pink salmon undertone to brighten up any darkness, which I don't really have. I just wanted to try the product to like speak to the consistency for clients and stuff because they do work in Sephora. So that's that guy there in rose quartz. So we'll try it and see how I like it today. I've only used it once, but I just found it a bit pink, which is kind of the point of it. So you can't fault it for that. And then I picked up the Patrick Star One Size Turn Up the Base Butter Silk Concealer. I picked it up in Fair 4 Golden. Um, so this is definitely darker than I would normally need, but I've been needing a concealer that I can use when I fake tan. Um, so I figured this would be perfect for that. I'm gonna start off with a pretty small amount of this. I heard it's supposed to be like full coverage, but I haven't seen anyone use it. I haven't really heard much about it. So I'm gonna play on the safe side and just go in with a thin layer to start. We can always build it up. That looks really nice, especially with the tinted moisturizer. It's blending in like really seamlessly and making my skin look very flawless. I'm honestly so impressed with how that concealer looks, at least in combination with the tinted moisturizer. It honestly looks so smooth and creamy and buttery, which I think it's described as, yeah, it says butter silk concealer. I haven't heard anyone talking about this, so I'll have to keep playing around with it, but that looks really, really nice on my skin. I love how that's sitting with the primer, with the tinted moisturizer, that combo's really, really nice. So I'm very impressed with that. Um, and now we are hopefully not going to ruin it by going in with the Fenty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. This is very light coverage, so it's like a sheer wash of color. It shouldn't really impact the makeup too much. It's just made to give a little bit of brightening under the eyes or wherever you want to apply it. That looks really nice. At least on camera i'll have to check in my mirror in a sec but from here it's looking really nice i just took a look in my mirror as well to the side like super close up and i absolutely love how that looks on the under eyes i think my skin looks really good you guys so i am very happy with that whole combo of products so far for bronzer and cream contour i have two products again i feel like i have two new products for every category because there's just so much new stuff coming out lately so i have two cream contour slash bronzers the first is the makeup by mario soft sculpt shaping stick and i have this in light i absolutely adore this i've used it many many times now but i know i like it and i've only used the anastasia once which is the other one that we have here and I wasn't a huge fan so I brought this guy kind of as a backup because it's still new to the market. So the Anastasia is the cream bronzer and I got the latest shade in Sun Kissed. I just feel like this is a little too light and a little too warm for me. Too light when I have my fake tan on. So I don't know. When I used this before, I ended up going back on top with my Makeup by Mario. And if that's the case every time, there's no point in keeping this guy. I may as well go a shade darker or just not use it. So we're going to try it out again. Give it benefit of the doubt. So I'm going to start off with the Anastasia. And then we will go in with the Makeup by Mario if I feel like it's needed. But the Makeup by Mario formulation is awesome. Highly recommend if you guys haven't tried it and are looking for a good sculpting contour bronze product. Yeah, it's very light and it's very, very warm. I wonder, I'm gonna look crazy while that's sitting there, but I just wanna do a little swatch of the Anastasia in light and show you guys the difference with the Makeup by Mario one. Yeah, there's a huge difference in tone. So this is the Makeup by Mario, much deeper, much more neutral, and then this is the Anastasia. I just feel like it doesn't really do a whole lot for me and it's a bit too orange. And I like carrying that product onto my nose as well and my chin. I'm gonna go into the Makeup by Mario just at the very top there and chisel it out. I've been so into, do the sides here as well. I've been so, so into this stick lately. I literally use it every single time that I do my makeup. I do have another cream product from Anastasia. This is their stick blush. I picked up the shade Pink Dahlia. I believe this launched in four different shades. Of course, I purchased the most true baby doll pink of the bunch. You guys know me. I love my blush. I love a heavy blush and I love a true pink blush. 
So I'm definitely more impressed with the blush than the cream bronzer. More so just because I like the color. The formula is nice too, but cream blush is cream blush. There's not many that I dislike. So let's go ahead and again, I'm going to do this on the beauty blender. And I have been applying my blush more so in this region, a little bit higher up than on the apples of my cheeks. Kind of that 80s blush style is coming back. I've noticed a lot of people are doing it more this way and I've been taking it less so on my nose, keeping more of like my contour bronze on my nose and keeping my blush just on the high points of my cheeks. Probably won't pick up any more of the stick blushes from Anastasia just because the other shades don't really interest me. But the formula is really nice, nothing wrong with it at all, but it's mainly the color that makes me like this so much, which is funny because it's the opposite. I feel the opposite way about the contour or the bronzer. Perfect everyday pink, very easy formulation to work with. Not too pigmented, but not not pigmented enough. It's like the perfect in between. So definitely if you're interested in these guys, I think they're worth it. Next up, we have two more powders to try again going into is I'm going to use one on the under eye and one all over the face so for the under eye I'm going to be using the Kosas the airy cloud set or the cloud set powder in the shade airy this isn't so new I've used it on my channel a few times now I believe and I've used it a lot off camera I'm not obsessed with it but I definitely like it not sure if I like it enough to purchase again we'll see I'm still playing around with it lately I have been pretty exclusively only using the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless powder under my eyes so I've been very picky lately but for today we're gonna go in with the Kosas one because it's still a newer product and I'm going to use my pro contour 79 which is my favorite very lightly setting the under eye with the cloud powder. I think I prefer this cloud powder um, on the under eye rather than using it on the whole face. I just feel like it looks a little bit nicer on the under eye and it doesn't give me the coverage that I usually like on my face and that smoothness. Now that the under eyes are set, we are ready to go in with the one size powder. This again, like the concealer I purchased just yesterday. So I have not had a chance to go in with it at all, but I have heard incredible glowing reviews. It has amazing reviews on the Sephora website and it has amazing reviews just like from YouTubers that I've watched, Instagram, etc. And I purchased mine in Fair 5 NG. So this is the fifth lightest shade, which is virtually unheard of for me when purchasing a powder foundation or any type of complexion product. But again, I wanted to go a bit darker to go with the tan that I've been wearing. So in the concealer, I went in with Fair 4 and for the powder, we're doing Fair 5. So the powder is all on and buffed into the skin and we have definitely lost some dimension from going over like the blush and the bronzer but we are looking absolutely flawless. My skin has not looked this airbrushed and flawless and blended and just like flawless. I don't know how else to put it. So this combination of products that we've used so far is honestly amazing. I can see for sure why people are raving about this powder. I'm a little bit shook. I'm excited to continue playing with it, the concealer and the powder. I can't believe no one's talking about the concealer. Granted, I've only tried it once, but very impressed so far. For bronzer, I just have one option because we've already gone in with our two creams. Um, so this is the new Benefit Hula Glow. I have not tried this out yet at all. Heard a lot of people saying that the shimmer or the glow particles in this can make the skin look somewhat ashy. So I'm interested in that. I mean, to me, it looks very warm toned. I love the original Hula. It's one of my go-to everyday bronzers. So I can't imagine not liking this. Just really set in that area. I mean, it looks very warm to me. I can't really see how that would pull cool on anyone, but we'll see. I feel like that looks absolutely fine. I'm not even noticing like a ton of shimmer or sheen to it. it just looks like a nice normal bronzer. It pulls pretty warm so I don't know why I've heard a few people saying that it was pulling more cool toned on them. I like that. I think it looks good. I'll have to keep playing around with it but 
Now for highlighter, again, we have two options here. I don't think I'm actually going to go in with the Makeup by Mario, but I just wanted to show you guys because I do own it and it is newer. I wanted to give my thoughts. So this is the Makeup by Mario Soft Glow Highlighter in the shade Pearl. This is what it looks like here. I'm just not obsessed with this. I think maybe because I'm so in love with the cream bronzer, cream contour from the line. The highlighter just really doesn't compare to that product for me. I'm just not in love with it. I'll do a swatch and we can compare it with the other shade that I'm going to show you guys as well or the other product. And then the other highlighter that we have is brand new from Dior. This actually launched yesterday or the day before. I ordered it last night. Already got here for the video so very excited about that. This is the Dior Forever Couture Luminizer in 01 Nude Glow. I believe this product, or at least the shade, I know for sure isn't new. They've had these same shades in their highlighters before, so I think it's just a reformulation. Um, but this is what it looks like. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Classic Dior, very bougie. So I've gone ahead and swatched the two here. It's probably hard for you guys to tell. This is the Dior one in Nude Glow, and then this is the Makeup by Mario one in Pearl. So the Makeup by Mario is quite a bit lighter. It is about a shade lighter. I'm gonna go into the Dior one first, and then we can top it off with the Mario if I feel like I need to lighten it a bit. So I'm going in with my Morphe R36, my absolute favorite highlight brush. I'm gonna go in with a very soft hand and I'm just going to apply it very very lightly to the high points of my face and then just with the excess I'll go in to the nose and the cupid's bow very lightly looking in my camera and then also looking in the viewfinder I don't think that this shade in nude glow is too dark for me I mean it definitely looks dark like that but then it looks lighter like that and it swatches quite a bit lighter so I'll have to see a natural lighting really suss it out make sure you you can't see like a strip of darkness and I'll let you guys know in the comments below if I have any issues but I think that looks really nice I'm going to go over a touch with the makeup by Mario one just to show you guys adding it to like the real high points and a bit on my nose okay that's it for highlight and I think I'm gonna just leave the blush for now we might just like not do a super blushed out look today now that the complexion is done before we go into brows and lips I just wanted to set everything in place with this new setting spray from Sephora collection this is the makeup setting spray 16 hour wear transfer proof and sweat and humidity resistant really love the packaging on this I did try spraying it in store to test the sprayer and looks great I won't be doing a wear test today, so I can't really attest to the makeup locking transfer proof sweat resistant So I'll have to update you guys in the comments below But the reviews on this online are absolutely incredible so far Sephora has been killing it Sephora collection with their new launches So let me know if you'd like to see reviews on anything else from the new Sephora collection launches But we're just gonna go ahead and spray this see how it sets everything in initially. It does have a very light skincare scent. It also says that it is vegan, paraben free, fragrance free, and mineral oil free. So that is awesome, especially the fragrance in a setting spray. It's just not necessary, especially if you have more sensitive skin. So, I mean, it feels really, really nice on the skin. I'm not getting any type of water droplets or weird residue. This isn't the kind of setting spray that's going to like mattify, add glow, add luminosity. None of that. It's really just going to make your makeup last and help with transfer and sweat resistance and all of that, which is awesome. Two brow products that we have here are the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. I absolutely love the packaging on this. I just think it's so sleek and pretty and cute. Like, how can you make brows look fancy? This is how you do it. I absolutely love it. So I have tried this out once. The first time that I tried using this, I went in with the gel first to laminate like I would with a soap brow. And then I went in with my brow pencil pomade. I don't remember what I used that day and it just looked crunchy and weird. I think you're supposed to use it afterwards to set everything in place rather than laminate 
beforehand so I'm gonna try it that way today see how we feel and then for the actual brow coloring product I have a product from the new Too Faced brow line they completely well didn't redo their brow line they never had brows before so now they have three brow product options they have a brow definer like a little bit thicker they have a brow pencil and then they have a brow gel as well so I picked up the pencil I've been more into pencils than anything else lately this is the super fine brow to detailer ultra slim brow pencil and I got mine in taupe so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the brows I haven't tried this yet really haven't heard much of anything about it feels a little less waxy than the Anastasia one and a little bit creamier which usually I like I like a creamier pencil it's just easier to work with for me this is how the brows are looking just with the Too Faced pencil. I actually really like how they look. This is how I've been doing my brows lately. A lot less fluffy, just more like simple and thin and defined. I really like this. I thought it was very easy to use, a lot creamier than your typical pencils. So beware of that if you have more oily skin or you don't like a super creamy pencil. Now let's go ahead and set them in place and brush them up a little bit with the, um, what do you call it? The Patrick Ta Major Brow lamination gel this is also a very I don't know if you guys will be able to tell there it's a very wet gel I don't know if it's going to dry out as I use it um, but it's quite a wet formulation I'm gonna brush my hairs up a tiny bit but more than anything I'm just using this to set them in place here's how the brows look set in place with the gel I feel like that didn't do a whole lot it definitely does make the brows a bit crunchy so be careful how much you apply with that because it is such a liquidy fluid formulation brows look good today i think those products work well together and since we aren't doing any type of eyeshadow today or liner we're just going to go in with mascara and one and done it so for mascara i have the bite mascara i feel like there's i had five mascaras <laughs> five high-end mascaras laid out for this. I had the new MAC one. I had the new one from Ilia. I had the new one from Velour. There's a new, like, there's so many new mascaras on the market right now. So I decided to go with the Bite one because it's been my favorite of those so far. So I figured I would share it with you guys. This is the Bite Upswing Full Volume Total Volume Mascara. This mascara is thick. She is big in charge liquidy formulation so it's one that you definitely have to be more careful with but it will for sure give you volume so i'm just gonna go ahead and do this on my upper lashes only it's just a big brush you have to be pretty careful how you work with it and i don't love having to be so precise with my mascara application but it definitely makes the lashes look really good that is how it looks with one eye done with the bite upswing and one eye not Granted, I have been using Grande Lash consistently lately. My lashes have, like my natural lashes, have been pretty good. To finish off the look and continue with the two products for each category, we are going in with two different newer lip launches. This guy isn't super new, but it's the only gloss type product that I have, and you guys know me. I love a gloss. So to start off, we are going in with the relaunch of the Bite Power Bullet Lipsticks. What are these called? Power Move soft matte lipsticks so they used to have these a few years back they discontinued them reformulated came out with some new shades and some prior existing shades this is in the shade sugar buns this is probably the shade that I would have picked out myself from the line anyway it's just such a gorgeous color so I'm going to go ahead and apply this to my lips I don't have any new lip liner or anything um, and I'm gonna do a little bit of an overline as per usual I miss wearing lip color to work so so, so much it just makes the biggest difference in a look it just like really ties a look together finishes a look off lip colors are like one of my favorite products to buy and play with and I just miss them this is so freaking comfortable on the lips it's a matte formulation but it's quite creamy and then for gloss I'm gonna go in with the milk makeup electric glossy lip plumper in the shade charged which is the hot pink I haven't tried this out they sent them over to me they sent a few shades and this just looks really pretty I love a pink gloss a hot pink gloss I love a plumping gloss so really everything I look for in a lip product Mm, this is so comfortable. 
very very happy with how everything turned out i absolutely love this lip color combo very very pretty that is all of the products that i had to try today usually at the end of a full face testing new makeup video i would go over each product and give my final thoughts but for the most part you guys saw i really enjoyed pretty well every single thing that i tried in this video the only two products that i'm still kind of on the fence about don't really have a full opinion on would be the Anastasia the cream bronzer and sun kissed I'm gonna take this back and maybe get a darker shade or just wait on it because I am so in love with my makeup by Mario one I feel like I don't really have a need for this in my collection and then the Patrick Ta brow lamination gel I don't really have thoughts on yet I feel like one time I really disliked it today I like it but it's nothing special so I'm gonna have to keep playing around with that but other than that everything else that I tried I was pretty blown away by especially the Patrick Star, the one size products. The powder and the concealer, I think, look absolutely gorgeous. So, highly recommend those and really everything else that I tried in this video. If you guys do like videos like this, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you like to see it. Let me know what videos you guys like most so I can film more of those that you want to see. And I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching this video and liking, subscribing anything like that, even just watching and commenting, all of that helps me out more than you guys even know. As always, I hope that you have or had an absolutely awesome day, and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye!